by the Americans, but they understood the issue. America being uh, where America is, knew it was going to have to get tanks all the way across the Atlantic, if they were going to fight in Europe, all the way across the Pacific, if they were going to fight against the Japanese. They knew about a 30 ton limit would be ideal for all the various ports, loading, um, transport ships, and that's why they went for a 30 ton tank. They got start making them in March 41, they carry on making them until October 42. It's taken over initially by the M5. It's a slightly better arm for uh, more arm protection, and they get rid of those front facing hatches. They've got periscopes and hatches above. There's a way to tell them apart. Uh, but a very, very reliable, very useful vehicle in the sense it's all service all around the world. Again, some are given to the Russians. And, uh, Again, that uh, aero engine in the back. Um, the later M5 had a Cadillac V8 automobile engine, which was another thing because they wanted the aeroplane engines naturally enough for aeroplanes. Centurion had something called a 17 pounder gun on. They upgraded that to a 20 pounder gun. Um, but there was a real worry at the time in the West that uh, maybe the Centurion wasn't going to be powerful enough to take on the bigger Soviet era tanks such as the T 10. Uh, we're used to those tanks at the end of the war, like the JS 2, the JS 3. They developed those onto the T 10 tank. And that is why in the West they started a program, certainly in Britain we went for a gun that was 105 millimetres, even bigger gun. And in America they started a 120 millimetre gun program. And uh, the idea with the tanks you're seeing there, if you look at the big American tank with A12 on the turret, um, that tank has got a 120 millimetre gun in. It was developed in the 1950s. The idea being that the more standard American tanks, um, such as the Patton series, the M47, M48, they might not be able to take on those heavier um, Soviet T-10 tanks. So they're going to have to make a similar tank in case. Now, when the British developed their 105 mm gun, that all went out the window because that gun could supersede the 120 mm so I'll point out that those tank guns out there was those vehicles go around because the British L705 mm gun uh, is on a number of those vehicles. Now we've got here, we're very lucky, we have the Dutch here in numbers today and one of the vehicles we asked them to bring over is this vehicle, PRTL, it was called the Dutch Military Service. Um, it's basically an anti-aircraft vehicle. Um, the idea being that you've got there 35 millimetre, what they call KBA Ehrlichan cannons, two of them on the side of that turret. Originally, when it was built um, for, it was called Gephard, for the German military, they use a Leopard 1 hull, but they actually put a car engine in the front of the box, and that's giving the power to a generator that runs all the electronics in that PRTL vehicle. Radar you can see spinning like a clockwork tree on the back is out to detect incoming planes. There's another radar on the front of the turret that locks onto those planes out to 30 kilometres away. And uh, when they're in range, normally about five and a half kilometres away, 
those two cannons fire a really quick burst of fire. Uh, they can fire, I think it's about 500 rounds a minute. So you put two cannons together, that's a thousand rounds a minute. That's a lot of fire going out of the vehicle. And again, the whole idea is in the Cold War, they're worried about Soviet ground attack helicopters and Soviet jets coming in um, to the bomb or staff your, your tank forces. So that PRTL has come over from Holland, we'll see it drive around a little bit later on. Look at an older two driving around. Not all countries were, of course, aligned with the Cold War. Switzerland, that's what you could speak to you. Um, that's a team that's the very big So it's for everybody, all in some way. And um, this, one of their problems, they didn't...